everyone, this is the fifth and final video of our self-paced learning material for Lecture 7. In the previous video, we looked at how we can calculate the change in the enthalpy of a reaction from the absolute standard enthalpy data. In this video tutorial, we will look at the variation of enthalpy with temperature in a chemical reaction. We've learned that the enthalpy of reactions are temperature dependent, and these are commonly tabulated at 298 Kelvin. Now, what will happen if the temperature at which you perform the reaction is different than that of your table of enthalpy of formation? Is there a way for us to accurately determine the reaction enthalpy at an elevated temperature? We also learned from the previous discussions that the enthalpy change for a reaction is given by this following equation. Differentiating the change in the enthalpy will actually lead to an expression for the temperature dependence of enthalpy. This is the derivation that I am about to describe in the succeeding slide. In order to do this, we have to take the partial derivative of the entire equation with respect to temperature while keeping the pressure constant. Doing so will give the following equation. Recall that this term is equal to the heat capacity at constant pressure. Substituting this term for the enthalpy of products and enthalpy of reactants will give us the following equation. Again, remember that P and R are the stoichiometric coefficients of the thermochemical equation and they are taken as constants in our derivation. At this point, I would just like to put an emphasis on why we are using the heat capacities in this derivation. The reason is that in many cases, heat capacity data are more accurate than reaction enthalpies. Now, the left side of our equation shows the change in the heat capacities of the products and the reactants. We can simply denote this as delta Cp. Doing so will give the Kirchhoff's equation, which is named after Gustav Rover Kirchhoff. This equation states that the variation of the change in enthalpy of a reaction with temperature at constant pressure is equal to the change in the heat capacity of the system. To apply the Kirchhoff's equation, we have to do some rearrangements, but before that, take note that the delta Cp is equal to the sum of the heat capacities of the products minus the sum of the heat capacities of the reactants. Okay, first we rearrange the differentials. We can bring the dTa to the other side and this leads to the following equation. In the next step, we will integrate this equation. Now, integration will allow us to relate the enthalpy of reactions at two temperatures. We can integrate both sides. Let's say we can integrate the right from T1 to T2, and the left-hand side from delta H at temperature 1 and delta H at temperature 2. Upon integration, we have a change in enthalpy at temperature 2 minus the change in the enthalpy at temperature 1 and this is equal to the integral of the right-hand term. We can further rearrange this equation to give us the following equation. So, what is this enthalpy change at temperature 1? This is basically our reference temperature. For example, if we have the change of enthalpy at 298 kelvins, then we can use this to calculate the change in enthalpy at any temperature T2. Take note that when you apply the Kirchhoff's equation, we assume that no phase transition takes place in the temperature range of interest. All right, so we can now apply the Kirchhoff's equation to answer this problem. The standard enthalpy of formation of water is given in the reaction below. Estimates its value at 100 degrees Celsius given the following values for the molar heat capacities at constant pressure. So we're given the different molar heat capacities at constant pressure for the products and the reactants here. So we assume that the heat capacities are independent of temperature. Let us start by writing the Kirchhoff's equation. When a change in the heat capacity at constant pressure is independent of the temperature in the range T1 and T2, the integral part becomes delta CPM times T2 minus T1, and the equation becomes like this. Now, this equation can only be applied to small temperature changes because over a large temperature change, the heat capacity is no longer constant. 
Now, recall the delta Cp is equal to the summation of the heat capacities of the products minus the heat capacities of the reactants. Continuing on with our calculations, we write the chemical equation, identify the stoichiometric coefficients, and calculate the change in the heat capacity. Substituting the values, this should give us a final answer of negative 9.92 joules per Kelvin per mole. Proceeding with our calculations, we will substitute the delta Cp value to our Kirchhoff's equation. Take note that the change in the enthalpy at T1, which is 298 Kelvin, is given in the problem. It then follows that the change in the enthalpy at 373 Kelvin is equal to negative 242.6 kilojoules per mole. You can also try this problem as an additional exercise. Assume that the heat capacities are independent of temperature. As what we've seen in the last example, the, the variation of heat capacity over temperature can sometimes be ignored if the temperature range is small. However, when it is necessary to take the variation into account, a convenient and common empirical model used to fit heat capacities over a wide range of temperature is given by this equation. In this equation, A, B, and C are independent of temperatures. You can find a table showing the temperature variation of the molar heat capacities in your textbook. Now, we can substitute the CP equation to the Kirchhoff's equation to give the following. Solving the definite integral in the right side of the equation finally leads to the integrated form of the Kirchhoff's equation. Again, this equation can be used with experimentally determined values of A, B, and C. So let's consider this problem. What is the change in the molar enthalpy of nitrogen when it is heated from 25 degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius? So the values of A, B, and C are already given in the table. This is our working equation, and basically we just have to calculate the values written in red, purple, and blue. Substituting the empirical values of A, B, and C, and temperatures 1 and 2, we will obtain 2143.5 joules per mole, 94.86 joules per mole, and 3.37 times 10 raised to negative 7 joules per mole. Finally, substitution of the numerical data yields the following expression. All right, to finally end this discussion, this will be the last problem for Kirchhoff's law, and you can try to answer this problem on your own. The first step is to solve in this problem is to write the expression for the delta Cp with the proper stoichiometric coefficients for the product and reactants.